welcome to Ask Nutritionist Deepa's podcast episode. I'm super excited. Uh, it's a beautiful spring day and I hope uh, you guys are doing well as well. Uh, today's episode is interesting because uh, it seems the word on the street is that there's going to be a meat shortage. Oh boy, what should we do now? After the toilet paper, now we have to deal with the meat shortage. Well, don't worry, I have some solution for you. This episode is also going to answer a question posed by one of my patients who is planning to go, to, uh, who is transitioning into um, a plant-based diet and is missing meat really, really, really badly. So my goal is also to teach her and give her, her and her husband some tips on what are some of the meat substitute that are from the plant family that they can use uh, in their diets. So. Anybody can guess the ingredients that I'm going to show you today? I'll give you a clue. It's not a fruit, it's not a vegetable, but it is from the plant kingdom. Okay, again, it's not a fruit, it's not a plant. I mean, it's not a vegetable, but it still belongs to the plant kingdom. It grows in soil. What can it be? Da 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 da. It is no other than mushrooms, okay? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six varieties of mushrooms here. By the way, this podcast is also available on YouTube for you guys to see. I decided to do it in my kitchen today so that I could show all these different varieties of mushrooms I found in the stores, okay? And they were really quite easily available. So why mushrooms, right? The first of all, they are full of nutrients. Let's start with their calorie count. Very, very low uh, calorie uh, because almost 70 to 80 percent of it is water based. So, low calorie, no fat, fiber, it does have fiber, it has some anti inflammatory uh, particulates or chemicals that are found only in this particular uh, uh, fungi group, which is our mushrooms. So anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer. The mitate mushroom specifically has been studied for breast cancer prevention. So um, added advantage there. And it does have that little bit of a meaty, uh, bit of a umami flavor that can easily be um, used to, to create uh, you know, the, the, uh, the flavor of meat if you're, if you're trying to go plant-based. People who don't eat uh, meat, it's, it's perfect too because you can do so much with it. It's, um, you can add it to stir fry, uh, you can add it to salads. How to use it, I'm going to touch on it a little later, but let's first uh, get into the type of mushrooms that I have here today. So where should I start? I am going to start with these oyster mushrooms. I hope you guys can see. These are the oyster mushrooms. Uh, they are all organic. The best place to find mushrooms is Asian stores like Japanese or Korean stores. Uh, I, I found it at a Korean store and the phenomenal thing is that most of the mushrooms that they have is, uh, is organic, so added bonus. But again, it says right here, meat flavor, oyster mushrooms, okay? So if I take it out, as you can see, they, they are attached and they're quite hearty, okay? And they do have a meaty texture. So this kind of mushroom and, and little hearty and meaty texture and uh, little bit of a meaty, like a chicken turkey type of uh, uh, flavor to it. So this kind of mushroom can easily be blended if you're making uh, a burger or meatloaf, okay? And I would add it a little bit, you know, with garlic powder and, and this finely chopped. And this is going to replace, even if you are able to replace 50% of the meat in your meat dish, this is going to be phenomenal. So here we have the oyster mushrooms. Okay, number two. Oh, these are the fun ones. Okay, they are called enoki. 
all right? Do you see how it's so funny? They are like these threads. They're almost like noodles, okay? Do you see? Are you gonna see this here? Okay, so they are extremely delicate, okay? Not much meaty flavor uh, when I smell it. So they have a bit of a neutral flavor to it. And you can easily replace the noodles in your dish or rice in your dish with, with uh, these mushrooms. As you can see, they are thin, they are tall, and they are quite chewy, okay? They don't break that quickly. So adding it to soup, or uh, recently I have been making a lot of ramen, uh, ramen noodles, so it comes in really handy in, in, uh, in my ramen bowl. So um, again, enoki mushrooms. They are called enoki mushrooms, okay? All right, moving along. By the way, mushroom is the only food, I mean only uh, uh, fungi or a, uh, or an ingredient or a substance that can produce vitamin D3 on its own. How phenomenal is that? As long as it is exposed to ultraviolet rays, rays during growing, so mushrooms get vitamin D3 on their own. So it's even better than uh, milk because milk doesn't really have uh, vitamin D3 in it. Every, it's all fortified. So mushrooms, however, have this amazing quality in them to produce vitamin D3 on, on, on its own. And we all know how important vitamin D3 is. If you don't know, please listen. It's, a, it's extremely important hormone and we want to make sure we have enough vitamin D3 for immune system and for hormonal balance. Anyway, I'm going to focus on mushrooms again. Okay, now these are another cute ones. Okay, they are called beech nut. Okay, I'm sorry, not beech nut. They are called beech mushrooms because if you look at them, they are like the umbrellas by the beach. Okay, or you can say like palm trees by the beach. Okay, and they are quite hearty. The stem is pretty strong and um, you can really buy, uh, really uh, take the top off and use the stems in soups or you, the, you can use the whole thing in, in stir fries. Oops, one of, one of them broke. Not really, I mean, they are quite hearty guys because you know, people have this perception of uh, mushrooms really shrinking down and having, you know, cooking down and not being hearty. But these kind of mushrooms are different than the white button mushroom. Button mushroom, the white mushrooms are usually a little more spongy and, and less flavor. So they are also good when you are um, adding it to a dish where there's a lot of flavor in it because the mushroom will, will, will absorb the flavor that it is thrown into. Uh, I decided not to show you guys white mushrooms because we all know what the, where to get them and what to do with them. I just decided to show you these different varieties that I found. So as you can see, these are beech mushrooms. Again, nice, nice mild flavor, but meaty texture. Then I have something called shimeji, white shimeji mushroom. Okay, I hope you guys can see it. Okay, so these shimeji mushrooms are, they are tiny and they are kind of cute and they are soft. And as you can see, they, they have a little bit of stem here, stem here and a head to go and on top. And they are again, have a nice mild to medium strong flavor, I should say, but again, quite hearty not, they don't break that easily, okay? You can definitely use them in stir fries. Towards the end, I'm going to show, I'm going to tell you one trick what you can do with all these mushrooms because I need to figure out what I'm going to do with these six, seven boxes of mushrooms around me, but I'll find a way. So um, these are, shim these are uh, uh, shimeji mushrooms, which I hope you guys will find to use. Then I have the shiitakes, the our regular old shiitakes, right? Now shiitakes are an interesting one. 
extremely meaty, extremely hearty. This is perfect if you are making a, a sandwich like, like portobello uh, or, or shiitake, like a burger type of a sandwich, or you can roast it and, and put it in, in your sandwich instead of a slice of ham or cheese uh, or meat because it's extremely chewy. It has very nice depth. So it, it makes a really nice, like a slice type of uh, uh, ingredient to put it in our sandwiches. Uh, what I have done in the past, I just take the top off, remove the stem. By the way, do not, do not, do not ever throw the stems of mushrooms away because they make a phenomenal broth, okay? Either you can uh, add the uh, stems in the broth or you can mince them and, and roast them and you can then start using them in, in, on your breakfast toast or uh, in your stir fry or even on top of uh, your salad. It makes a beautiful, uh, very flavorful uh, topping. So as you can see, the, the shiitakes are hearty, heavy. So I usually take this cap off, which is, you know, it has a perfect uh, uh, width I mean, uh, it has a perfect height of a, uh, like a bread slice. So it has a nice bite to it. And just with a little bit of soy sauce, I just roast it in the oven for like 10 minutes. And then it becomes golden brown and the soy sauce sits in and uh, I take it out and a little bit of ginger maybe or, or uh, salt and pepper or red pepper flakes. I, I put it in, in my sandwich. Okay, and it's so flavorful. I cannot even tell you. Um, I once, uh, I guess it was just last week, I had a, just a roasted top of shiitake mushroom and roasted tomato and avocado on my toast. And I'm telling you, it was heavenly. So uh, start using the shiitake mushrooms as a, sal as a sandwich filler, okay? And last but not the least, the my takes, okay? Now my takes are, like I said, have been studied for its benefit for cancer, specifically breast cancer. And they are very delicate, okay? But they are like this little beautiful flower here, okay? It looks so pretty, almost like coral uh, reef in the ocean, right? So it's like a little flower, very, very delicate, but very intense flavor. And when I say intense flavor, I mean it, okay? So again, this will go right into the, uh, into the dishes which, which have a little bit of herbs and spices or, where, or uh, the dishes where you are trying to add meaty flavor by not adding real meat. So that's what these mitek mushrooms are good for, okay, as a filler. Uh, and to induce meaty flavor. So again, all these mushrooms have unique flavor, unique shapes. They are really a fun ingredient to play with. And my tip of the day uh, for those who are, who are trying to reduce meat in their diet and looking into transitioning from everyday meat to maybe meatless Monday, or uh, you know, trying to cut down or trying to add more vegetables, Mushrooms is a perfect fungi from the plant family. Like I said, full of nutrition and I mean nutrients. And what you need to do, this is my tip as to how you are going to cook it. At least what I'm going to do today is I am going to at least roast all these tiny ones, okay, in the oven. They, they, they roast very quickly. I'm just going to marinate them either in, uh, I'm going to make, I guess, three stations. One with the balsamic vinegar, second one with the soy sauce, and the third one is going to be just a little bit of lemon juice and ginger uh, or lemon juice and chili pepper. <clears throat> the balsamic vinegar will have some rosemary and garlic, and the soy sauce will, will be with a little bit of garlic and um, Maybe I have some lemon grass that I'm going to throw. So I'm going to roast all these mushrooms except my enoki because enoki I'm going to make uh, going to save it for my ramen noodles. 
okay, uh, that I may end up making in a couple of days. So mushrooms roast really well in the oven. You marinate, you marinate them. Oh, before I forget, how to clean mushrooms, okay. If they are extremely soil, then you just want to quickly rinse it. Never ever soak mushrooms in water. It's going to be a big mess, okay? So quickly rinse it. If there are big mushroom caps like these or portobellas, you can uh, take a wet napkin or a paper towel or a cotton cloth and, and wipe them really down. Wipe them down really well. So uh, that's how you clean mushrooms and then I'm going to I, I'm going to uh, sprinkle some marinade, toss them with some marinade, and roast it in the oven at 400 degrees for maybe eight to nine minutes. It all depends on how much moisture they have and how crunchy you want and um, and how uh, you know like chewy you want. So you can experiment with it. There's really nothing that can go wrong here. And once they are out, then you can eat it the way you know, like a side dish or your main dish or add it to stir fries in the end or add it to soups, mm, add it to you, uh, add it as a, add it in your blended dishes like burgers and, and meatloaves, those type of things. And, uh, or if you have your inokes, you start using them instead of noodles. I wonder how inokes will taste with some Italian uh, tomato sauce, who knows? I must try, I'm, I will try it one of these days. So that's kind of my two cents about uh, how to start using mushrooms as a meat substitute in case meat industry really shuts down. And I don't want you guys to panic. Uh, that's why I decided to do this episode on mushrooms. Anyway, between meat and mushrooms, mushrooms are way, 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 way ahead uh, in terms of nutrition. One last thing, one important quality about mushroom is its sustainability. For example, now hear me really well. One pound of mushroom needs 1.8 gallon of water to produce, okay? One pound of mushroom needs 1.8 uh, gallon of water. One pound of meat, everybody pay attention. One pound of meat needs 2,500 gallons of water all right with that parting sentence i'm going to end this episode here i hope you will join me next time because i'm going to have a very special guest back on this epi uh, on this podcast who has who has been an amazing uh, uh, change maker who has taken his health in his hand and has changed his life dramatically and he's going to share his life story how he made that change why he made that change and what are some of the tips he's he can uh, share with all of you and me to make that change okay so uh, stay healthy stay well go to the grocery store if you can or order this variety of mushrooms uh, from the store and and enjoy mm -hmm.